the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft quality foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Tonight's program is a program of special importance because it contains big news for you from the makers of Parquet Margarine. We can't tell you now what the big news is, but just keep tuned to this program. You'll hear all about it before the show is over. Now, The Great Gildersleeve, brought to you tonight by Parquet Margarine. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Well, the great Gildersleeve has been pretty busy lately, what with getting ready for Marjorie's wedding and all. But tonight, he set all problems aside, donned his blue serge suit, and went down to walk his pretty nurse, Catherine Milford, home from the hospital. Yeah, man needs a road map to find his way around in these hospitals. Let's see, Catherine said she'd meet me on the third floor at the intersection of therapy and pediatrics. Hello, Dr. Oh, there she is. Hello, Catherine. I'll be just a few minutes. I want to help Dr. Olson with some x-ray pictures. Hmm. Uh, there's a waiting room here if you'd like to sit down. No, I'll just wander around. I'll meet you right here. Yeah, I'll be here. <laughs> Helping Dr. Olson again. Him and his darn x-ray camera. I hope he gets foggy negatives. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Wonder why they leave all the doors open here. You can see right in the rooms. That guy doesn't look very sick. <laughs> Lying in there reading the paper. Wonder what he's in for. Oop, he sees me. Hello, how do you feel? <laughs> Gee, what a dirty look. <laughs> Probably something wrong with his liver. Guess I'll go in the waiting room and sit down. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see what magazines they have here. Mm. Woman's Home Companion from last October. The Odd Fellas Annual. Butterick Patterns. What a collection. Oh, excuse me. Do you mind if I sit down here? What? Oh, no. Sit right down, madam. Plenty of room. <laughs> My, it certainly feels good to sit down, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Oh, um, do you know anything about watches? Watches? Well, not very much. I'm in the water business. Oh. Well, I'm supposed to meet a friend here at 9 o'clock, and now my watch has stopped. Maybe you can tell me what's wrong with it. Well, I'm not in the watch business. Yeah, you see, it, it stopped at 5 o'clock. She's a genius. <laughs> it's a good watch. It just won't run. Yeah. Well, if it's a good watch, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Catherine? Here, suppose you look at the watch and I'll go out and see what time it is. What? All right. I'll be right back. Yeah, good. Well, I get into these things. Came to a hospital to pick up a nurse and I wind up fixing watches. <laughs> Little tiny wrist watches. Oop. Slipped. Oh, brother, that did it. Right on the marble floor. Well, I'm back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Guess what time it is. Uh, about your watch. You see, I was just... Oh, about... did you fix it? Now, wait, I... Uh... Why, you did. It's running again. It is? Oh, you're simply wonderful. How'd you do it? Oh, nothing. Just a slip of the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready, Throckmorton. Shall we go? Uh, oh, Catherine, yeah, let's go. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, don't mention it. Come along, Catherine. It was very kind of you to wait for me tonight, Throckmorton. Oh, that's all right. I just couldn't tear myself away. It's so interesting watching Dr. Olson work. Oh, it is, eh? The way he handles those intricate machines and x-rays, simply fascinating. I can imagine. You can see that he's talented. He has those long, slender fingers. Octopus. <laughs> I admire.
admire men who are skilled with their hands. Don't you, Throckmorton? Well, it would be kind of embarrassing to admit, Catherine. See, I'm rather clever that way myself. You? Certainly. Handcraft has always been one of my specialties. Yes, indeed. Guess you've never noticed that I have pretty long hands, too. Artistic, a lot of people say. <laughs> now, this I never knew about you, Throckmorton. Well, you know what they say, Catherine. Still waters run deep, and I'm a deep river. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Paint? Carve? No, I, uh, I like to fix watches. Repair watches? Really, Throckmorton? Well, just as a hobby, that is. Remember that lady in the waiting room? Yes. I fixed her little watch as easy as pie. Really? You bet. Like to see Dr. Olson do that. Well, Throckmorton, it takes a master craftsman to do that kind of work. Where did you learn it? Well, you know how it is with a talent like that. It just sort of comes to you, Catherine, right out of the blue. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Yep. Well, here's my house. If it weren't so late, Throckmorton, I'd ask you in. Well, better luck next time. Watch out for the porch steps. Mm. Pretty dark. That's all right. If Mother hears us, she'll turn on the porch light. In that case, let's go up quietly. Huh? <laughs> I guess Mother's asleep. Yeah, bless her little heart. Well, uh, I'll say good night, Throckmorton, and uh, thanks for walking me home. Wait, Catherine, don't go in yet. I really should. Please, this is the first time I ever said good night to you without the porch light. <laughs> Rockmore. Such a beautiful night, Catherine. Would you give me just one little kiss? Well, I... Please. I, you you, you ha haven't told me how Marjorie is. How, how is she getting along with plans for the wedding? The wedding plans are going fine, but let's talk about us. Catherine. How's uh, Leroy? <laughs> Leroy's fine. What's he doing? He's making a wedding present for Marjorie in the basement. Really? Catherine. What kind of a present? He's making her a footstool. Oh, my, that's nice. Catherine. Is he uh, uh, making her footstool by himself? Oh, my goodness. Catherine, we can talk about Leroy any time. I think it's very commendable that he's making a gift for Marjorie. He must be clever with his hands, like you. Well, I imagine I have taught him a few things. I have a workbench in the basement, and I let him use the tools. Oh, I think that's wonderful. A real craftsman like you can do anything. I know one thing I'm not doing too well. <laughs> Most of all, Throckmorton, I admire a craftsman who's willing to take the time to help a little boy like Leroy. You do? Mm-hmm. Close your eyes, Throckmorton. They're closed. <laughs> <laughs> She kissed me. By George, I am a craftsman. Hold everything. Bertie's coming. Good morning, Bertie. Oh, Miss Milford, nice to see you. Won't you come in? I was just going by, Bertie. I, I don't suppose Mr. Gildersleeve is home. No, ma'am. He's at the office. Something I can tell him? Well, I have a little favor I'd like to ask of him. <laughs> He'll do it for you, Miss Milford, I'm sure. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve was telling me last night that he's an expert with tools and machinery. Come again? <laughs> well, that he has a workshop in the basement. Uh, I brought over a kitchen knife of Mother's. It's one of her special favorites. I have it right here. Say, that is a good knife. Mm -hmm. Mother's had it for years, wouldn't let anything happen to it. And, of course, I had to drop it on the sink this morning and make a big nick in the blade. Oh, that's too bad. I bet your mama got pretty upset. She doesn't know about it, Bertie. I sneaked the knife out of the house. <laughs> I wonder if Mr. Gildersleeve could grind down the edge of the blade and take that nick out of it. I don't know, but I'll sure tell him about it. Oh, I know he can fix it. He's so clever about these things. Yes, sir. I wouldn't trust anybody else to touch it No, ma'am Well, I'll leave the knife with you, Bertie Tell Mr. Gildersleeve I'll pick it up tomorrow All right, I'll take it down to the cellar and put it on his workbench Oh, and you can tell him it belongs to Mother He'll know it's important Yes, ma'am <laughs> Leroy. Are you home for the day? 
I guess so. Saturday afternoon, thought I'd do a little reading. Gee, Uncle, will you come down to the basement and help me with my F-O-O-T-S-T-U-L-E? F- <laughs> F-O-O-T-S-T-U-L-E? Yeah, my footstool. Oh, brother, how can you make a footstool? You can't even spell it, Leroy. <laughs> That's just to throw Marge off the track in case she's listening. Yes, yes. Come on down to the basement and we'll have a look at it, my boy. You see, it's going to be keen when I get it finished, Unc. Leroy, is this a footstool? Sure, I figured it out myself. Looks to me like steps. Yeah, that's the idea. It's a footstool for three different pairs of feet. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. A three-passenger footstool. Sure. I wonder if No, I... my boy. Three is enough. Now, let's see. What's holding you up? I ran out of money. Money? Yeah. I drilled a hole where a hole shouldn't be. And then I had to buy some putty to fill up the hole. Now I haven't got enough to buy a putty knife. Fifty cents will turn the trick. Now, just a minute, Leroy. You can't be running out every five minutes and buying tools. Will you get it for me? That's not the point. A real craftsman doesn't have to race down to the hardware store every time he needs some simple little tool. He looks around on his workbench till he finds a piece of metal that he makes his own tools. Are you kidding? Certainly not. Got to use your head, my boy. Be ingenious. That's what makes a clever craftsman. Now, let's look at your little problem. You need a putty knife. I figured that out already. All right. Now, let's see what we have here on the workbench. A set of Christmas tree lights. Bird cage. Flip gun. Ukulele. <laughs> You're going to make a putty knife out of that? <laughs> Just keep your shirt on, Leroy. Hmm. Have to clean this bench up sometime. What you going to use, Unc? Well, here's something. This old kitchen knife. Just what we need. Where'd that come from? Well, how should I know? Simply have to use your eyes and your brain, my boy. Now, you see, the knife has a nick in it. So, uh, you know what we're going to do? I'll bite. Very simple. You turn the grindstone, and I'll grind the end off. I'll show you the slickest putty knife you ever saw. Golly, you're a genius, Unc. You bet. Crank up the grindstone. Yeah. Now watch this. I'll round out the end. Look at the sparks. Yeah. We're shaping the tool. A little ingenuity, a little brain work. That's all it takes. Wait till I tell Catherine about this. Bunk, this is a swell putty knife. Well, you keep your eyes open, my boy. You can learn a few things from your old uncle. Gee, I wish I had a little saw. Saw? Yeah, they're heading down at the hardware store. Now, rolling. hold on, Leroy. <laughs> Give me that old knife again. I'll show you another trick. We'll put some teeth on it and make a saw. Hand me the file, Leroy. What a character. <laughs> Now, how do you like that? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a real craftsman tool, my boy. And all out of an old kitchen knife. Round on the end for puttying, teeth on one edge for sawing, and I sharpened the other edge for whittling. So is what you can do with a little brain work, my boy. Excuse me, you down there? Yeah, I'm in the basement, Bertie. Sounds mighty busy down there. Yeah, I'm showing Leroy a few shortcuts. Well, speaking of shortcuts, Mr. Gilsey, did you find a kitchen knife on your workbench? Yeah, what about it? It's supposed to be sharpened up and the nick taken out of it. Sharpened up? Well, I'll be seeing you, Unc. Oh, no. <laughs> Leroy, where are you going? My heart knows where the water goes, Mom. And I want to know where the water goes. <laughs> that boy. Now, what about this old kitchen knife, Bertie? Oh, kitchen knife? Mr. Gilsey, that knife belongs to Mrs. Milford. It's her pride and joy. Mrs. Milford? Zeke? (laughs) Miss Catherine brought it over this morning. It's her mama's special favorite kitchen knife. She said you was a craftsman and you could take the nick out of the blade. Can you do it? Can I do it? I do it. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Remember, we're going to have big news for you in just a few minutes. 
Have pencil and paper ready so you won't miss a thing. It's news, big news from Parquet Margarine. The margarine that's so good, its makers can afford to say, double your money back if you don't agree that Parquet Margarine is the best margarine you ever tasted. Keep tuned to this program. Big news for you in just a few minutes. Well, the great Gildersleeve is quite a craftsman. He managed to take a big kitchen knife with the nick in the edge and with a little fancy work on the grindstone, convert it into a... Well, it has teeth on one side, a cutting edge on the other, and it's round on the end. Pretty clever. The only catch is the knife belonged to Catherine's mother. Uh, why didn't somebody tell me this was Mrs. Milford's? And the way she cherishes everything in her kitchen. Can't tell Catherine what I've done. She couldn't believe I'd be so stupid. I don't know, though. She might. One look at this knife would convince her. Well, I'll have to try to buy her another one, that's all. Going to the hardware store, Ron? Never mind, Leroy. I'm just a little kid, and I didn't know any better. And am I glad. <laughs> now, stop making a mountain out of a molehill. I'll buy Mrs. Milford another knife, and that's all there'll be to it. I hope so, Unc, for your sake. Yes, yes. Good luck, Unc. Oh, goodbye, Leroy. <laughs> Hardware store. <laughs> Afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Fred. I'm looking for a kitchen knife. Uh, something like this. I never saw a knife like that, Mr. Gildersleeve. Just between you and me, I doubt if anybody else has either. Well, I I made this one. <laughs> no kidding? Say, that's kind of interesting. What do you call it? Well, uh, I called it quite a few things. <laughs> You're quite a craftsman, Mr. Gildersleeve. Small saw edge on one side, cutting blade on the other, round dead. Rosewood handle? Yeah, but what I'm looking for is the kind of a knife I made it out of. I didn't get that. The knife I made this out of. You see, I ground another knife down and reshaped it. But now I, well... Oh, one of those little mistakes, eh, Mr. Gildersleeve? (laughs) Now, wait a minute. Oh, I know how it is. I'm a a married man. Well, I'm not. (laughs) That's right, you're not. Just try and visualize what the knife looked like before... You must have one around. Hmm... Yes? You have one? No. You... Oh, Fred. But we did have one. Uh, last year it was. Oh, that's going to be a big help. As I recall, I sold it to Judge Hooker. You know the judge? Judge Hooker? Sure, he'll give it to me. Hooker's my best friend. He better be. <laughs> Judge is home. He has his laundry on the line. Long underwear. Eh, better take it easy with the judge. Not be too anxious to get that knife. If he finds out I want it, he's liable to get up on his high horse. <laughs> that bell. Uh, why did I ever tell Catherine I was a craftsman? Machinist. Can't even cut my own fingernails. Well, Gelday. Hello, Judge. This is an unexpected pleasure, Gelday. What brings you to my house this time of day? High tide in the water department? (laughs) Very funny, Judge. (laughs) No, this is just a social visit. (laughs) Mind if I come in? Oh, by all means, do. I uh, simply decided it's been a long time since we saw each other, Judge. Oh? Can't let a fine old friendship like ours wither on the vine. (laughs) Oh, no. Now that we've watered the vine, what's the favor that you want to ask? (laughs) Judge. I know you, Gilda. What is it? What a suspicious mind. All I'd drop by for, Judge, aside from a friendly visit, is to see if you had a plain kitchen knife that you bought down at Fred's hardware store last year. Kitchen knife? It's not the least bit important, Judge. Just thought I'd check with you, that's all. Yes, I do have a knife I bought from Fred. What about it? Well, it doesn't matter at all, but I thought if you wanted to get rid of it... Gilday! <laughs> oh, for Horace, if you must know the truth, I'm in a very embarrassing position. I've got to have that knife. What for? Well, I made a little mistake. Catherine Milford brought one of her mother's best knives over to be sharpened, and I didn't know it was hers. I, uh, <clears throat> worked on it a little. 
Is that it in your hand? Well, that's what's left of it. Can't let her know I did such a stupid thing, Judge. Say, that's quite a work of art. Huh? Teeth, cutting edge, round on the end. No cracks, Judge. So you want my knife to take back to Mrs. Milford, is that it? That's roughly the idea. I'll pay you for it, Judge. But after all, you've used it for years. Oh, I hate to part with it, Gildy. But as a favor to an old friend, I will. Good old Horace. I'll let you have it for just what I paid for, two dollars. Profiteer. <laughs> it's a deal, though, Judge. Here's your two dollars. But, Gildy, if you take my knife, what will I use to cut my pumpernickel? Well, that's easy. I'll leave you this one that I operated on. Look here. You can slice, spread. You can do anything with it. My, with a knife like this, I can be a real cut-up. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sharp, an old goat. <laughs> I can make Catherine believe this is her mother's knife, I'm in. Uh, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're going to be mighty lucky if you squeak out of this one. <laughs> hello, Throckmorton. Uh, hello, Catherine. Just stop by to drop off your mother's little knife. Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. <laughs> How does it look? Why, it's perfect. <laughs> In fact, I can scarcely believe it's the same knife. <laughs> oh, yes. <clears throat> well, a little fine machine work makes a big change. Oh. It's absolutely marvelous what you can do with tools. Isn't that the truth? Thank you, Throckmorton. Your ingenuity saved my life. Oh, saved mine, too. <laughs> Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Nothing, PV. Just let me sit down here and take a deep breath. Certainly. No charge for that. <laughs> I was just making up some fresh deviled egg sandwiches, Mr. Gildersleeve. Could I interest you in one? Not now, PV. I just had a very close call. You don't say. Yeah, you'll never believe this, PV. But I've just been through an episode of knife juggling that would have turned your hair gray. Mine's gray already. <laughs> it's a wonder mine isn't. Fortunately, I'm a quick thinker. Bank pardon? I said I'm a quick thinker. Oh, I wasn't sure for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I ruined a knife that belonged to Catherine Milford's mother, and I had to move fast, Peavy. I put one over on the judge and got a knife away from him that was just like it. She never knew the difference. Pretty trick operation. Hmm, sounds like it. <laughs> well, you see the judge. He'll tell you all about it. Too bad I had to swindle the old codger. Now, that's funny. What is? The judge was in here a while ago, and he said the same thing about you. What? <laughs> in fact, I bought a knife from him. You did? What's he doing? Going into the cutlery business? Afternoon, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Bertie. Bertie! Hello, Mr. Gillsleeve. I came down to get some ice cream for supper. Oh, good. I love ice cream. I'll be with you in a minute, Bertie, as soon as I finish making this sandwich. <laughs> yes, sir. By the way, Mr. Peavy, what kind of knife are you using there? Well, I don't know what you call it. Judge Hooker brought it in, and I bought it from him for $2. Peavy, that's the one I gave Hooker. I made it out, well, I made it out of that knife of Mrs. Milford's. He had no right to sell that. Imagine Hooker doing a thing like that to a fellow jolly boy. If you ask me, Mr. Gillsleeve, that's a mighty fine knife you invented. Me? You invented it down in the cellar. I heard you. Yes, but... Th Look at that knife. The way Mr. Peavy makes them sandwiches with it. That's the slickest thing I ever saw. What? Say, that's not bad. Is this really an invention of yours, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I made it, Peavy. Yes, sir. That's what Mr. Gildersleeve was doing in the basement. He was inventing the knife. That's right, Bertie. He got a soft tooth edge on one side for cutting bread, and got a sharp edge on the other side for slicing, got a round end on it for spreading. Well, that's a knife every woman's going to want in her kitchen. By George, Bertie, I knew that all the time. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> well, since it's my knife, Peavy, I really should have it back. Shouldn't I? Well, I'll sell it to you for two dollars. <laughs> two dollars again? All right, this time it's worth it. What you gonna call your new knife, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, how about Gildy's blade? Gildy's blade? That's just right. 
Yes, sir, Peavy and Bertie certainly know a good kitchen utensil when they see it. And that, friends, brings me to the news. And it's real news, because you can get an exact duplicate of that knife Gildy invented. And it's a sensational bargain. Listen, Gildy's Blade is really a double-edged knife spatula, the first of its kind ever manufactured. That's right, a three-in-one kitchen implement that combines the uses of two fine kitchen knives and the spatula all in one. Now, let me describe it. Basically, the knife spatula is a flat blade of mirror-finished stainless spring steel, one and one-quarter inches wide and seven inches long. It's set in a polished, imported rosewood handle, four and three-quarters inches long. Overall length is just under a foot, about the length of your favorite bread knife. One side of the blade has a lifetime serrated edge that never needs sharpening. That makes it a superb knife for slicing bread, cake, fruits, vegetables, anything you want to slice without crushing. And the other side has a hand-honed, razor-keen, straight-edged blade. That's a big, all-purpose kitchen knife for any kind of cutting, paring, or peeling. Two edges for the same blade. Two fine kitchen knives in one. And then, in addition, the wide, flat, springy blade is spatula-shaped. Turns flapjacks, fried eggs, fried potatoes, scrapes, and mixes. So there you are, three implements in one. Two fine kitchen knives and a spatula in one handle. Why, that knife spatula would cost at least $2 if you could buy it at a store. But listen, you can get one from us for just 50 cents, plus the label or wrapper from any loaf of bread you buy at your dealers and the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine. What a bargain. Remember, this knife spatula was invented by Gildersleeve. Actually has his name on the blade. So there's only one way to get it. Mail your half dollar, your bread label or wrapper, and the red end flap from a parquet package to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now write down that address. Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send 50 cents, a bread label or wrapper, and the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine. Be sure to include your own name and address, and your wonderful knife spatula, Gildy's Blade, will be mailed to you immediately. And now, here again is the great Gildersleeve. Well, folks, we had a lot of fun making this knife, but it's really a good thing. And Bertie wasn't kidding. Use it and enjoy it. Good night, everybody, and see you next week. <laughs> The Great Gilder's Sleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Beacon. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gilder Sleeve. Here's a taste test that counts. Try any meat without mustard. Then add a golden dab of Kraft prepared mustard to your next bite. Taste the difference. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who like their mustard mild, or Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember this, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Have you heard the new Break the Bank? It's next.